um, are launching our um, stewardship uh, focus for our facilities upgrade uh, today and uh, for the month, the month of June. And you would have noticed in, in uh, recent years we've been gradually upgrading our church facilities bit by bit. They're 30 years old, believe it or not, uh, this year. And we've completed a new entrance foyer, um, or the entranceway, the foyer, uh, new coffee lounge and catering areas, new chairs in the community hall, and, and, um, and also a much needed storage shed at the back of the facility. And so bit by bit, over the last few years we've been doing that, probably been raising just over maybe $120,000, dollars $30,000 each year towards just gradually upgrading our facilities that, uh, as you know, with your, your house, uh, you've got to keep working on it. Otherwise, uh, if you let things go, when you do upgrade and try and fix them, it'll be uh, probably uh, twice the cost of such. So uh, we have, for this year, decided uh, there's a, a big need that we want to deal with, but over a two-year period. And it's a bit costlier than our normal one-year uh, uh, campaigns. And so when I tell you what it's about, I, I think I might get a cheer or two. Any guesses? <laughs> we actually need to get a new air conditioning system for the auditorium. Oh, okay, that wasn't, that wasn't as good. And uh, we would like to finally get an air conditioning system for the community hall, which has been up for 20 years. And, yeah, okay, a bit of a... Because I think some of you stay longer in that community hall than in the service here, that's why. And you know what it's like, you'll freeze in winter and you'll cook in summer. But that community hall's been up for uh, over 20 years and uh, it's all ready, but we haven't put the, the finance into the um, air conditioning there. And as you're aware, we give a huge amount into World Missions, uh, heading up to a couple of hundred thousand dollars a year and in our church planning strategy. And so we've put that off, but we feel it's, it's important to do it. But the big need... Um, is our present auditorium here. And uh, we also want to do the upstairs office areas and teaching areas, um, which has um, a system that is uh, not, not the best. Um, Milan Tompich, who's our general manager, he's been working on this for probably a year and a half. Milan, would you like to stand and so people can see who you are, for those who, who are new to the church? He's been working on this for about a year and a half. And um, if you're one of our guests here today... Uh, we do this on a yearly basis and to, to communicate to the church, but this is the report that has been put together in relation to air conditioning. Now, you can grab that report if you want it, if you are technically oriented, and um, uh, then uh, in the entranceway, there's a report there. And in fact, if you have uh, questions that you'd like to ask about it, uh, then Milan's making himself available um, for next Sunday after the, this service to sit down for half an hour, whatever, in the upstairs area, the boardroom, my office area, to answer any of your questions. But um, um, this presentation, this, uh, 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 we have a consultant who is part of our Blackwood CFC church named Daniel Moore, whose expertise is in air conditioning. This auditorium air conditioning system, um, we stole it from the state bank when they went bust, not quite. They gave it to us for free. That's right, Bill Osborne. Bill kind of uh, found it, and it was, <laughs> and we stuck it up. And uh, it's probably about 40 years old because I think we put it up in, in the late 80s, early 90s. And um, um, but it is well and truly on its last legs. If you read the report, you will see there's some bits to it that are a little bit dangerous, and we we do have to get rid of it. Um, and uh, it's an energy guzzler. In fact, uh, the one upstairs is as well. Uh, it, it doesn't cool properly. It doesn't heat properly. There's, prop, there's kind of poor air quality flow. Uh, when we're here for about an hour and a half on a really moderate day, you don't really notice it. But even on a moderate day, if you're here for a day, you will notice it. The airflow is pretty bad, and so uh, when we this place is packed out for schools and other rentals, and so when there are people upstairs, we've had people fainting, be, get sick. We've had groups say, "Now look, we can't use the facility because it's just not, uh, it, it just doesn't function." So many complaints have come in. They love the facility, but I've been up there uh, on a reasonably warm day, 
and when the place is packed, and I don't know how people survive it up there. And so, um, so some groups are saying to us now, look, uh, uh, we, we can't hire the facility, which is just a shame because this is meant to be a community centre. So it, it's a significant uh, issue. Um, <laughs> it's pretty well useless now, and we need to replace it. The, um, uh, the first uh, screen uh, shot, guys, uh, what will it cost? Um, for the auditorium, it's about 282803 The uh, The community hall uh, will cost uh, $145,000, and, uh, and we have never put it in there, and so the space is available for it, and uh, people have been crying out for it for quite a few years, and we kind of felt like, if the finance can come in, this will be the priority here, uh, then we will do that. The upstairs area, the office offices and... Um, um, that will cost about 145000 So if you can appreciate, downstairs, upstairs is as big, but it's divided up into offices and teaching areas, and it's just terribly inefficient. For example, if somebody's working there on their own, they can turn on, you've got to turn on the whole system for one room, and then one room freezes and the other room is warm, and it's just really awful. And so it, it's not a wise use of our, uh, it's not a good stewardship process. For example, our electricity bill here hit nearly $50,000 a year. And uh, since we put solar panels up, we've reduced that down now to 21,000, uh, which has been fantastic. Um, and so when you consider, and also with changing the lights to make them LED lights, so, so the, the Milan and, and the team have been really careful to make sure that, that we, we are as responsible as we can with the use of power. Uh, with new, new air conditioning here with massive horsepower capacity compared to what we have now in the community hall and upstairs, it'll just increase overall, I think, the bill by 10%, I think it is, which is amazing when you consider, and if you read this report, the, the, the level of horsepower that's required for in here for cooling and heating is huge. So um, how do we finance this? Um, the... Uh, Thanks, if we can just put on the, the next slide, uh, that would be great. On June the 26th, which is the end of this month, we're taking up a special support offering, and the kids join us, and the young people join us, and we have the big containers out the front, and we, we as families and individuals put our commitment in, and it's something that we do uh, for this area. We are looking to raise $200,000 at that particular offering, and then the $350,000 through commitments that people will make on a weekly or fortnightly or monthly basis. And uh, over the past few weeks, uh, I have been talking to, to, to individuals and couples about could they lead the way in relation to giving. And so um, uh, I have had commitments from 19 couples and individuals that they're prepared over the next two years to, to those commitments total now $136,000, which I think is over a quarter of the way. Is that right? And uh, so these are folks who have been part of the church uh, for, for quite a while, others who are newer who, who uh, uh, would like to support it. And so, so we are giving leadership. 19 couples and individuals have committed to $136,000. We're a quarter of the way there. And we're asking for the rest of the congregation to support this and to be a part of it. Uh, I would never ask you to give, and have never done this from, the, from, the, from day one, unless I'm practicing what I'm preaching. And so my wife and I have committed $15,000 over the next two years. We're going to put in five grand into the uh, special offering on the end of the, the month, and then 5,000 each year. And some, some people uh, are able to give more, others obviously able to give less. We have the capacity to do that. You may not have the capacity to do that. You may have the capacity to do more than that. Uh, this is between God and yourself. But I can't ask you to do something, and Kath and I would never do that unless we kind of led the way, and, and I've shared that with the couples and individuals that are supporting. So we're, we're $136,000 on the way, a quarter there, and I trust by the next week or so we will see that maybe go up to... 150 to $200,000. It will be great to see that take place. But nevertheless, we're giving you the opportunity to think and reflect and pray over the next three or four weeks uh, in relation to uh, what you would give. And we certainly don't want you to say, well, look, I'll, like for Kath and I, this is over and above what we give to our mission offering. 
So we support world missions strongly. So we're not saying, oh, we won't support world missions. Uh, we wouldn't do it otherwise. Or our weekly tithes to support the ministry in the church here for its basic functioning. Um, I guess the little caption that, that I love is, is we're calling for equal sacrifice, not equal giving. And uh, the widow's mite is as important and valuable as significant sums. Uh, I've found over the years, uh, sometimes there's been extremely wealthy people in the church and uh, who could cut a check of 200 grand and, and it would be easy. But you know, that doesn't happen. That doesn't happen. The millions of dollars that we've raised has come by God's people giving the $1, the $10, the $100, the $1,000. And um, I'm thankful that sometimes we do have real generous, large givers, but most of the giving has come through people like you and I, who are wage earners, who just pray and reflect, and we ask God to help us and to guide us. And it revolves commitment and, and sacrifice. And Kath and I have had to say, okay, well, if we're going to do that for the next two years, we've got to cut back in this, and we've got to continue giving here and there, and, and so you have to do your sums. I remember um, uh, one of our stewardship, uh, or a couple of our, our, our stewardship giving, we had a lady called Mrs. Baker, Mrs. Ivy Baker, some of you remember her. She was a feisty... Scotswoman, I think, or from the UK, and you wouldn't want to fight with Ivy, she'd win every time. But uh, loved the Lord and uh, was so generous, and she said in one of these big stewardship campaigns, we're wanting to raise a million, two million dollars, she goes, I want to be the first one to contribute. So we had to kind of help her down to the front, and she put a thousand bucks in there. Now that's equivalent to some of us that could, that could afford to give 20, 30 thousand dollars. And so it was kind of mind-blowing. Here was this woman in her 80s, another one, Mrs. Edna Gent, um, dear old soul, and she said, I want to give my funeral money. I've been saving my funeral money. I want to put that in. And we said, Edna, you can't do that. <laughs> so she was here again. She's strong, and she insisted. So we got her family's permission, and I think we, we kind of signed something. We said, well, Edna, if the Lord calls you home before you save it up the next time, we'll cover your funeral costs. That's the only way we did the deal. Anyway, she did that, and I think she did it a second time. And so she just kept on living and giving her funeral money to us. <laughs> I need to say that because... These are beautiful people who are in heaven now. And I'm very conscious that we are the recipients, we are the beneficiaries of their love, their faith, their generosity. Uh, what we enjoy is because they have put it in. And so the, the hard yards were done. So even this campaign of what we need regarding refurbishing and getting a proper aircon system here, there and up there is small compared to what others have contributed. So I want to encourage you uh, in this. And I'd like the ushers now, just to give you the booklet that uh, uh, we are posting out to everyone tomorrow, and uh, you will get one in the post if you don't let us know you're here at church today, so you've got to let us know on your Connect card that you're here, uh, otherwise uh, you'll get another one, and the Greek in me says $1.50 per postage for these people is just not good stewardship, so please uh, uh, let us know you're here at church. So if you'd like to take this, please, and uh, let me... Um, make a couple of comments about it. If you'd like to take out, uh, you can read this at your own leisure. If my preaching gets a bit boring, you can read it, that's okay. But um, that's for you to have a look at and I've basically shared uh, verbally with you what's there but this little card the welcome home card and the envelope there we've given this to you and it gives you a breakdown of we've kind of looked at if there are around 450 giving units in the church and I mean by that a whole family like you know it could be a family of six or it could be one individual if they're around 400 450 or so um, and I haven't worked that out we're just working on a 200 figure and this is what we have broken it down to, and Milan Tompich has, has, has worked this out, that uh, if one person gives a gift of $15,000 uh, on a yearly basis, that's, that's a $30,000 commitment over 24 months, and then three people give $10,000, seven people do what Kath and I have done, the, the 7500 uh, per year, uh, the $15,000. Uh, so it just takes seven people do what we've done, that's 105000 um, and then all the way down, and depending on where you're at financially, doing your sums, working out your budget, praying and asking God to give you wisdom, I want to encourage you to be a part of this. 
Okay, not to say, oh, well, somebody else will do it. No, it's actually all of us together. And uh, if, perchance, we, we only raise the finance for the auditorium, that's all that we'll do. Uh, but the, the cry is to do the community hall, and uh, if we raise the finance for that, we'll do it. And then lastly, we'll do the upstairs area, and so the pastors and, and staff may have to suffer for another few years uh, up there. But uh, So we don't want to go into debt. The way we try and finance our upgrading of our facilities is, is looking at uh, this kind of approach. And so I want to encourage you to consider this, to put down what your total two-year commitment will be. I'm asking you to consider it, pray, and then to work out what you would put in on the end of the month. And so as, as kind of like, so let's kick this thing off. And if we can raise $200,000, that will be fantastic. Because once we start this, it's not like the, the, the company will do it and, and could do the whole thing by the end of, end of the year, which means we've got to ensure that the income is coming in on a weekly, monthly basis that we can cover the, uh, uh, the, 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 the loan that we'll take extending our credit line with the bank. And so we would like to knock that off as quickly as possible. We don't want to actually uh, go into massive indebtedness and so it needs to come in um, this way. Now you can actually, if you're not here on the 26th and you would like to make that commitment, you can do it today, you can do it during the week, you can email Milan, you can put us in next Sunday and I want to encourage you to be a part of it. Can we stand together as we pray before we come around God's word? Join with me. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. He is Jehovah Jireh, his name in the Old Testament. God, my provider. Philippians 4.19, Paul says that our God will meet our needs. He will supply where we have lack. It doesn't say that he will meet our wishes and our desires that are not appropriate. But our authentic and legitimate needs, he will meet. And we have some needs here as a church. You have some needs in your own life. And you can believe God for his blessing and his provision. I want to lead you in a prayer. And may God guide you as you work with us to see this great need met. Father in heaven, we thank you for uh, the opportunity to share honestly and openly regarding this significant need that we're facing as a church here. And Lord, we know that you're more than able to work. And I thank you that you have provided so beautifully, so wondrously, so miraculously through your people over the past four decades. I thank you for people like Ivy and Edna who are in heaven now. And Lord, this uh, wonderful, faithful witnesses and uh, amazing, generous hearted people. And we thank you, Lord, that uh, we're recipients of those who've gone before us of their faith and love and generosity. And I pray that we would uh, respect it, but also, Lord, be inspired to say, yeah, if this is my church and I belong, that I want to be a contributor. And I pray, Lord, that you would help people here. And all those who say this is their local church to be part of this. For those who are guests, I do pray, just bless them anyway, Lord, and may they just receive something from today's service. But for those of us who say this is home, help us, Lord, to take it seriously, to pray, to get your mind, to do our sums, and to all be part of this and to involve our little children and to involve our grandchildren, to involve our teenagers, every constituency, every age group of our church here, I pray, will embrace this, that we will be able to accomplish and see the auditorium, the community hall, and the upstairs work areas all covered in this amazing gift that we see from this company. Thank you for Daniel, for his expertise in putting the report together. Thank you for Milan. And I now thank you for your people here and those who will be getting this by uh, letter in, in the early days of, of this week, that you will touch their hearts and that we'll all see work together to accomplish and meet this great need for your glory. We pray it in Jesus' name. And everyone said, Amen. Amen. You may be seated.